Hey all, Heretic here, and today in the Battlegrounds, we are talking about elementals. We're going to talk about all the different minions, spells, heroes, trinkets, you name it, we're going to cover it, that you might use while playing elementals. Now, we're not going to cover every one of them. If it's just a stat stick, if it just swings a couple times, that's all it does, well, you can figure that one out. I have faith in you. You could do it. If not, have questions if you, if you still have a question. I'll always answer something in the comments below. I'm not going to sit here and be like, haha, I won't answer that. That's beneath me. I'll answer whatever you got. Don't worry about it. Now, as always, if there's any patch changes where something gets a shift, I will put that in the comments below and pin that. And if heaven forbid they do a full tribe redo, well, that's usually at the end of the season. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. But if so, I could reshoot the whole video if required. But that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, let's start with a simple one. Let's start with the Selemental. It's almost like its name tells you it wants you to sell it. And yeah, more or less, you don't want this staying on your board too long. It is nice because it does have a way to enable triples. Remember that second form can be tripled just as easily, realistically easier than the first form because you can play this, sell it, and then just hold the other part in your hand until you have a triple set up correctly, depending how your minions are playing out and everything. Elemental's not super complicated. It's just remember that later in the game, this is a nice way to enable a lot of the minions we're gonna talk about that want you to just play elementals to then buff things. So having one elemental that actually plays twice means you're only paying one gold for it to get two of those buffs, depending what they are. That's usually well worth the investment. Bountiful Bedrock is a 2-2 that has at the end of every two turns, get a random elemental. This one is really good to pick up in the early game if you think, hey, I'm probably going to be playing elementals or hey, just want a minion every two turns for economy. If you have a nice enough tempo or just direction into elementals, this is a really good fit for most of your early game boards. And hey, once it's gold, and it's sitting back there. Sometimes you'll keep it for a really long time. So it's not a bad investment. Jumping up to tier three, the Fiery Fellblood is a 2-1 elemental demon that reads Death Rattle, minions in the tavern have plus two attack this game. Now, I usually don't want to buy this. If it's a triple I happen to get, that's the best thing, or it's just generated from free things, then I'm okay with it. But typically I don't want to invest in this unless I feel really strong. Or if I know this is in the shop and it offers me, we'll get into later, but a fell blood portrait, there is some potential for this playing elementals even because fiery fell blood really is the one you want for this because it is just gonna allow you to trigger that buff every single turn, so it's not too shabby. Otherwise, this is typically an elemental you wanna pass on if you have to pay for it. Slimy Fellblood is a 3-4 elemental demon that reads, Battle Cry, minions in the tavern have plus two health this game. Now, while not exciting, it's only plus two health, it is for the rest of the game. Yes, you might cycle this a couple times. Obviously, if you have a Fellblood portrait, you can get more value out of this, but this isn't usually a big deal for elemental boards. Buffing the shop or your minions is usually pretty doable, but in the early game, if this is in the shop and there's two other minions you want and that plus two health to each of those minions makes a decent difference, it's not a bad investment. It's got a three, four stat line, which isn't bad. So in the mid game, early triple, this isn't bad even for an elemental board. Landlubber is a four or five elemental pirate that reads the tavern offers an extra tavern spell each refresh. Now this one, can be really good and can stay on your board the entire game, depending which enabler you end up needing it for, say being a living Azerite, or if you end up being a Nala build, there are some good uses for it. Land Lover's not bad. It's got a good stat line for tier three and the effect it gives of giving you potential cheap spells in the shop is kind of always worth it. So if you think you're playing elementals, this is definitely worth picking up or hell, if you just think you're going a spell build in general, this is a really good fit. Sleeping Sea Glass is a 4-4 elemental that has a choose one effect of double this minion's attack or health. Now, if you've buffed the shop at all, this can be a pretty significant increase in stats. If, the, if it's baseline and you play it, yeah, okay, it's an 8-4 or a 4-8. But it, later in the game, especially if the shop's been buffed to say 30 is its baseline, doubling that to 60 attack or health, either way is good. And then when you do it again, you could buff the other end of that spectrum. And then when you golden it, it is now going to triple that stat line. Just remember to try not tripling it if you can help it by randomly generating elementals. And I know you only have so much control out of it because if you just generate a random elemental of surprise, yes, it will give you divine shield to this minion, 
but that elemental of surprise you just randomly generate won't benefit from the extra stats that are in the shop as opposed to if you just happen to buy one out of the shop so if you're given the option always try to buy this triple just for that triple stats getting extra value from the already buffed shop Little Rag is a tier 4, 4-4 four, four elemental. After you play an elemental, give a friendly minion stats equal to the elemental's tier. Now in the mid game, this is a good fit. If you do a build later in the game where you're cycling a lot of elementals, Rag can be a good fit. Typically, he gets outshined pretty fast by other ways to scale up elementals, be it trinkets or other minions you can pick up. But, I mean, I've played games where I've had two golden rags and that has been my scaling. You get a brand, you just cycle a whole lot, and you win that way too. So, Rag can be a win condition in himself, but typically he's more of a nice mid-game power spike. Living Azerite is a 6-6 elemental. Whenever you cast a tavern spell, elementals in the tavern have plus one, plus one this game. Now, I like Living Azerite, but at the same time, it's kind of slow. So you have to be in a good position. You either need a hero power that's going to give you tempo, economy to allow you to do this or you're just gonna die before you can get it there because Azerite takes time to get going. Yeah, if you've got two trinkets that generate spells, great, you're getting three spells a turn, you should be all set. At the same time, you could just get a Nomi trinket and just cycle elementals and not have to buy spells. Depends what spells you're being offered. Do you have a land lover? Can you get that extra spell generation on this? This is one of the builds we'll talk about later, but Azerite isn't a bad minion at all, just depending on the build and hero you're playing. Recycling Wraith is a 5-4 elemental that reads, after you play an elemental, your next refresh costs one less, which to most heroes means it's free. So cycling elementals is one of the primary ways you're going to win with, with elementals, and Recycling Wraith enables that. You put this on the board, and every time you play an elemental, you can now roll to find more elementals, triples, better minions for free. That's pretty easy to figure out being a good thing. You get Selementals, you'll see Tavern Tempest in a minute. Those kind of things are just going to enable you to dig for the cards you want with decent success having free rolls. Tavern Tempest is a 2-2 battle cry, get a random elemental. Yeah, it's not insane, but for one elemental, you're getting two triggers typically, depending on what kind of buffing system you have going on. If you have a brand, it's essentially free and cycling that will just give you more rolls and more buffs to your board. Tavern Tempest is one of those cards you're really looking for when you're playing elementals in the later game. The Wildfire Elemental is an interesting elemental because it has lots of potential, but you don't really see them get used much anymore. It's kind of fallen off because it's hard to buff it enough, but it is a 9-5 that reads, after this attacks and kills a minion, deal excess damage to an adjacent minion. So that means if you hit a target, say it has five health, and this has its baseline of nine attack, you're gonna deal an extra four damage to either the right or left, and it's random which side it's gonna swing at. That's kind of where the problem starts with Wildfire Elemental. We refer to these attacks typically as cleaves, but most cleave attacks will just automatically hit both sides. Wildfire only deals that excess damage to a randomly determined side. And sometimes that's the difference between hitting the perfect minion and something that does nothing. That's just kind of painful to have happen. And the fact that it's just not that easy to buff until the later game and elementals tend to buff kind of slow what's on their board and more what's in the shop more effectively so you buy to replace minions. That means you're more likely to pick up a giant golden wildfire which does shoot both sides and not just one random side, as opposed to slowly scaling one up like you would with other tribes until eventually it dominates. Elementals play a little weird and wildfire elemental definitely suffers from the difference in play style. Carbonic Copy is a tier five, six, seven elemental that reads start of combat, summon a copy of this minion. Now, Carbonic Copy is one of those that definitely benefits from you being able to buff it a lot in early. Obviously, you're gonna get two minions for one spot. Every combat, it's gonna summon out an extra copy of itself, and then when the combat's over, it disappears. You don't get to keep it, I'm sorry. It's, it's not there forever, it's just a combat thing, it's gone. But if you can buff it enough, if you find a way to buff your, your minions fast enough, this can be quite good. I have played in Naga build, 
and all of a sudden, because I was having a good luck, but having no way to find a way to make my deep blue buffs permanent, I cast deep blue on a carbonic copy that went from a 6-7 to over 700 attack and health in one turn. And then instantly, I was powerful because I had two minions instead of one. I just found a way to double that value of all of those deep blues. Carbonic copy has the same kind of issue as wildfire though, where things on your board with elementals are a little hard to buff fast enough to get the value you might need compared to other tribes, which can just build really fast big monsters. But if you can get it there, especially when you triple it because it summons two copies, it's really good really fast. Flourishing Frostling is a 2-1 elemental. That sounds bad, right? But wait for it. Has plus two, plus one for each elemental you've played this game, wherever this is. That means if you know you're going to be cycling a lot of elementals, as opposed to just a couple, then you know this is going to be good for you. If you're playing more of a spell build, you're not really buying a lot of elementals. You're just kind of casting spells to buff a couple and buy here and there. This probably isn't going to be as insane as other minions will be for you. Still could be very good, but if you're playing a build that cycles a lot of elementals, have you got a brand? Are you just going to town generating them? Then yeah, flourishing can get massive really, really fast and is well worth an end game spot on your board. And one last really cool thing about this, the effect it has of plus two plus one for each elemental is an aura effect. So what that means, if it gets hit by something like a Bramble Witch, it is not going to reduce the stats of this creature in the same way. What it will do is reduce the stats of any buffs in the baseline stats of that minion to 3-3. Three, three. But the plus two plus one for every elemental that has still been played will still be there regardless. So typically still very large. So if you're in a situation where someone is Bramble Witching your elemental board, it's perfectly viable to taunt this thing the Bramble Witch hits it and basically does nothing in some cases, and then you're all set. Continue on, you've just negated their Bramble Witch and killed it. Moss of the Schloss is a 3-4 elemental, and every time I say that name, I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. I don't know why, it just kind of feels like I'm going somewhere wrong with it. Whenever another friendly elemental dies, gain its maximum stats once per combat. Now, I don't like this minion, and I know there are times when it's amazing, Say you have a giant crackling cyclone. That thing hits for 500. It's massive. You've buffed it to the moon. It's the best it can be. It's going to swing twice, so it's probably going to die, right? So you're great. Oh, wait, your opponent goes first. And because elementals are in, because you're playing them, you use the Bramble Witch. Bramble Witch hits whatever your taunt is, or just a random minion, makes it a 3-3, and now Moss gains a 3-3 buff. Moss of the Schloss is not great if your opponent counters you. And that is why I almost never put this on my board unless my opponent seems to be really obtuse and just forcing stats down my throat. Maybe then, but even then, I'm still too weary to want to play this thing. Transmuted Bramble Witch is a 4-4 elemental quill board that reads when this attack set the defender's stats to 3-3 once per combat. Gold does it twice when it swings a second time, if it survives. Uh, this thing is a monster, a mainstay for every endgame elemental board. Why not play this thing? It is going to, if not kill whatever it hits, at least turn it into a 3-3. Three, three. And that is almost always worth its weight in gold. There are times, yeah, you won't want this. Is it an undead swarm board that their first guy is kind of a joke? Okay, but against all your other opponents, it's still gonna do a damn good job. Maybe move it back a little further that way it's not swinging first. Save it to get those backline minions, especially if it's been buffed up just by being on your board as some elementals usually will, get big over time. Rock Rock is a tier six, five, five elemental that reads, after you play an elemental, give your minions plus two attack swaps to health next turn. Obviously, if you're playing a build that wants to cycle a lot of elementals, this is your end state. This is the final thing you want because every time you play one, it is gonna give either plus two attack or plus two health. It is an important note that if you have two of them on your board, they could be in the same state, so both buffing attack, or they could be alternating. So one is health, one is attack, and that means every turn, they're basically gonna offset each other and you'll have the perfect round of buffing. Rock Rock is fantastic if you are playing a heavy cycle build. If you are not, gonna be tough to grow big enough to survive with a Rock Rock. 
Elemental of Surprise is a 8-8 elemental with divine shield that reads, this minion can triple with any elemental. What that means is you only need two minions to triple an elemental of surprise other than the elemental of surprise. So do you have two rock rocks and you find an elemental of surprise? Instant triple. Word of warning about when you buy elemental of surprise. Check the pairs you have. Because if you have two water droplets, which are the minions that come out of elementals, and you triple that by accident, because you didn't realize in your handful of cards you had two of them, you're not gonna feel really good when you, instead of triple your rock rock, it triples the water droplet. It's not something you get to choose. It's just random. If you have four pairs, it's just gonna randomly give you one as a triple, and the others you might have all preferred are gonna sit there and look at you and go, you really should have sold one of those other things, huh? Really should have sold it. Otherwise, Elemental of Surprise is perfect. You only need two of them and the Elemental of Surprise to triple, and they get Divine Shield. Typically, that is about as good as it gets. In tier seven, we have the Granite Guardian. This is a 128 Elemental that reads Taunt. Whenever this is attacked, reduce its attacker's health to one. Now. This is a, a tough to say if it's a good card because it really depends on your opponent. Are they playing a token board? They have a lot of Death Rattles and Reborn. They don't care at all about this. Are they a massive Foe Reaper? Is it like a thousand, one thousand? Well, it's a thousand in one. So it dies the moment it swings at this thing. Is it a Leroy? Well, bad news, good news. You killed the Leroy, but you're dead too. It's just very situational when this is good. Typically, I do not like Granite Guardian, but there are some boards, say against a demon board, when you make that giant demon that's swinging at you go down to one health, it does feel pretty good. So just remember, some use cases this is very good at, others, eh, find something else. Now, when it comes to the spells you want to use when you're playing elementals, well, it's refreshingly easy. Typically, you're going to go with all the usual stuff. It's going to be Chef's Choice, Planar Telescope, and Lost Staff of Hamul. Now, when it comes to the other spells I want when I'm playing elementals, typically any of them are playable, of course, as they, they would be for any tribe. Obviously, if we're going for a spell build, cycling cheaper ones is going to be more effective to get all those stat increases we can, but we'll cover that in the, the build section. But for spells that stand out with elementals, I'd say Suspicious Stimulant is a great one for a couple use cases. So it's not necessarily Every time you see this, you want this and you're to use it, but there are some times when it can be incredibly valuable. If you say, have in the shop a sleeping sea glass and it would be a triple for you, or maybe just the second part and your shop is buffed up to a decent degree and you then double those stats. When you play that sea glass, you're gonna get a lot more value out of it. If it's for the triple and those stats are buffed to a decent degree, you are looking at a ridiculous amount of attack or health, depending what you need. Typically, let's face it, it's health you want because you can make this thing easily well into the hundreds without Suspicious Stimulant. But once you add Suspicious Stimulant to it, especially if it's been buffed a bit, it can be an absolute monster. And also Carbonic Copy. If you're deciding you want to start running one of these and get it going, if that shop's buffed at all and then you hit it with a Stimulant, you are now going to double those stats when you play it. And when it makes a copy of itself in that combat, you double those stats again, effectively for the purposes of the combat. All spells are playable with elementals like any tribe, but something like this does stand out in a couple fun use cases. Let's talk about the heroes that like you to play elementals. Now, I'm not saying these are the best heroes, the greatest ever. I'm just saying these heroes can be good, have performed well for me or other people I know of, and tell you why I think they're viable if you find yourself in an elemental build. And I'm gonna lump both of these together, Rakanishu and Doc Hunter Holiday. Now, the reason for that is their hero power gives you a spell. So pretty easy since you have lots of good spells that work for elementals or any tribe for that matter, but you also have Living Azurite who specifically wants you to buy spells and especially more so in the case of Doc Holiday where yeah, you get a random spell but it can be from any tier you have access to for spells. So when you hit it, yeah, if you're at tier six, it might give you a tier one. It also might give you a tier six. And the important part about all that is it's one gold for both these heroes. So it's very cheap, dependable way to get a spell. 
Sometimes you get a lot of value depending what spell you happen to get in the case of Dr. Holiday. Next, we have Trade Prince Gallywix, one of my all time favorite heroes. Unfortunately, right now, a little hard to play. His armor's dropped a little low and his hero power, while really good in the late game, does not much in the early game at all. And by the time you get to the point where it starts doing something, you're often at single digit, and let's face it right now, zero health. Trade Prince definitely needs to get armor a good bit more. I would say at least eight more, if not 10 more at this point. I think once you get to 10 and higher, it has the potential to be really dumb because Trade Prince has always been the kind of hero that dropped really low on health, but then super bounces back up as you just cycle cards like crazy. And most elemental builds involve you cycling a lot of cards. So assuming if you just feel saucy, you want to have fun, or maybe they bump up his armor, Trade Prince Gallowix can give you a big return on investment if you're cycling elementals. Guff Rune Totem Oppens, Decent advantage to playing any version of elemental builds. And the reason for that being is their hero power in its current form simply wants you to buy cards, minions, spells, it doesn't matter. And then it counts the tiers. And as you get to those higher tiers, there are some tier six spells that cost two gold. And that's giving you a good chunk of the way to getting your triple right off the bat, because this thing just gives you a triple reward every time you get 20 tiers worth of cards you buy. Usually pretty easy to do with elementals where you're cycling a whole lot, but Guff really can give you a big return once you get into that later game. It can be a little dicey in the early game, but once you get to say turn eight and nine, you really can start flying once you get up to tier five and six. Millhouse Manastorm loves elementals, and why? That is because of the recycling wraith. Recycling Wraith reduces the cost of rolling by one every time you play an elemental. Well, Millhouse's refreshes cost two, so you're gonna cycle two elementals if you want it to be free, or get a gold re Recycling Wraith and you're all good to go. But once you've got one of these online, gold or normal, Millhouse starts to shine, because getting to buy minions at two gold means every single thing that discovers another minion was essentially free, especially if they give you an elemental, which now will give you more rolls to dig for the cards you want. Millhouse is amazing with elementals in the late game, always worth playing if you can. And of course, we have to mention Chenvala. Chenvala wants you to play three elementals, and what he'll do then is reduce the cost of the tavern tier by three. You don't have to play elementals, but in the trinket meta, that does make you more likely to play elementals because it's then gonna give you probably elemental trinkets. So you might not mind playing those elementals. The only problem with Chenvala is you have to find them. Yes, I have had games where on turn five and six, I still haven't seen a single elemental and I'm going to tier three, basically with no hero power. It is pretty bad when that happens. Conversely, there's the shop when you get to tier two and there's a couple of elementals in the shop and you're tiering three, basically to three and four or at least at a greatly reduced price. Always consider Chenvala, especially if you think you're playing elementals or they're at least viable in the lobby. Let's talk trinkets. What trinkets are great to play with elementals? What trinkets can really help push you to the win? Now, these are mine. These are not necessarily the best. These are just the ones that I see work well and work well for others I have seen. Now, obviously we have to say colorful compass both the lesser and the greater trinket, because guess what? If you're playing one tribe, getting free copies of those minions, it's kind of hard to say is a bad thing to have. So definitely Colorful Compass will fit any elemental build. Bellblood Portrait, you typically see a lot with demons. It shines with demons. You're gonna consume that shop, you're going to get more value, but it can work with elementals to a certain degree. Obviously, Fellblood Portrait's not gonna do a lot for you because of the fell blood you're getting, but because of potentially a fiery fell blood in the shop, depending on your hero power, of course. If you could trigger the fell blood, you're gonna get good value, but typically the fiery is gonna give you more value. The only time I typically am even remotely tempted to take this is when the other ones in the shop just don't sync with me for whatever reason. And in the shop, I see a fiery fell blood. Once again, depending what hero you're playing and what extra value you can eke out using that power. Primordial Terrarium is a lesser trinket that after you play an elemental, your next tavern spell costs one less. Well, if you suspect you're playing elementals, if you already have a good setup for it, 
then Primordial Terrarium is going to give you cheaper, if not outright free spells. And that is good no matter what you're playing. Lava Lamp is probably my favorite of the lesser elemental trinkets. And that's not because of any raw power it gives you or stats. That's just because I like APM and the more you cycle cards, in this case, the more free elementals you're going to get, which always feels good. After you sell five minions, get a random elemental, pretty easy value. You don't have to sell elementals. You just have to sell minions, anything. You cycle patient scouts, sell elementals, doesn't matter. Those are gonna give you faster access to free elementals. Once you have something like a brand and you get lots of battle cries going, you're gonna start printing a lot of cards. It is not strong initially, but as you get to say turn nine and 10, especially if you have a brand, this one really can explode in value. Nomi sticker, both lesser and greater are very good. If you have any way to cycle elementals through hero power or just what's in your shop or minions you already have on your board, say a bountiful bedrock, the Nomi sticker is gonna quickly start scaling up the rest of your shop. Every time you play this, this is gonna buff your elementals. Whether you end up playing demons eating them or you just end up playing giant elementals, Nomi sticker can really work. And unlike when Nomi was a minion, the problem there was Nomi took space on your board. Here, there is no Nomi to eat up that space. You just get to benefit from cycling slowly ever increasing elementals in size. It gets really crazy. In certain lobbies, this can be completely ridiculous if there's not a whole lot of venom, if the divine shields aren't getting too big, if you don't have giant beatboxes looking at you, you can easily outscale a lot of boards and smash your opponent down. Azerite portrait is a get a living Azerite. Your living Azerites also give stats to friendly elementals. So that means is every time you play a spell, you will buff the shop as always with living Azerite. But now you will also buff your elementals on the board, meaning elementals you normally have a hard time scaling, you now can scale. Where Nomi only buffs the shop, Azerite's buffing the board and the shop, giving you more potential value. Now, the cost of that is you have to have an Azerite on the board. You have to buy spells. But with the right hero power, with the right minions, with the right lesser trinket, you could do that much more effectively than other builds. So definitely take this into account. If you already have an Azerite, on your board or in the shop when this is offered to you, this becomes a lot easier as your scaling just doubles. And once you get a triple, yeah, it gets really crazy really fast. Azerite Portrait, well, it takes a little time to get going, can be very rewarding in the long run. Jarred Frostling is start of combat, give two friendly elementals death rattle, summon a flourishing Frostling. If you are running a build that wants you to cycle a lot of cards with elementals, then this is going to be valuable very fast. Do you have a recycling rate? Do you have a brand? Are you just chugging through them, finding all the minions you want to cycle? Have you summoned 50, 100 elementals? That means your Frostlings are massive. And if, say, this is a lobby with Murlocs and you're worried about Venom, well, when your giant elementals die and then they, two of them summon more giant elementals, that is gonna be a little easier for you to deal with that giant venom board you're looking at. It's not a catch all, it's gonna beat everything, but it does get pretty big. And the later the game goes, the crazier they can get if you're cycling enough of them. I personally love Jarred Frostling, especially in Murloc lobbies. Finally, we have Surprise Portrait. Now, this one is unusual because we don't know exactly how it works, but it's a greater trinket that says, get an elemental of surprise more appear when you least expect them. And yeah, it is completely random. When you get this, you're gonna get a surprise elemental, so be careful, you're about to possibly get a triple. You're gonna randomly have them appear in the shop. Sometimes your shop can turn into a bunch of them. It is stupid funny sometimes because you are cycling as fast as you can because you're playing an APM elemental build and all of a sudden you hit refresh, you see them turn into elementals of surprise and then they go away because you've already hit the refresh button. So just, just take it a hair slower. I know those animations can take a little while, but the difference between printing a lot of easy triples and rolling away some big value uh, can be very painful when you know it cost you a game. But this is gonna give you a lot of triples and a lot of divine shields on some very good minions typically. It is well worth doing. And it is just a lot of fun for the sheer randomness of when it appears. 
Now I have taken this multiple times and it does seem to happen pretty consistently, especially when you have a recycling wraith and you're rolling a lot, you will get a good number of these. Just be careful, don't roll away too many. Okay, so we're fighting elementals. How do we beat them? What do you do against them? Well, I've got good news for you. Basically, they got one trick. It's, hey, we have really big stats. Here we come, we're gonna grind you into the dirt. If they're not big enough, you're all set. They lose, GG. But if they're really big, there's only a couple things you really can do to counter them. Now, there's all the obvious stuff. Yes, buff your attack if you're playing undead. Yes, get more divine shields if you're playing mechs. But these things are all obvious in the things you always should do anyways. There's only a couple little things you can do to deal with the raw stats an elemental board can put out. And that's basically scam it down by using all the tricky minions you have out there so you can actually counter them and deal with their board other than your usual raw stats yourself. So we're looking for anything with venom. Be it a dagger spine thrasher, any of the multitudes of murlocs, whatever you're getting, venom hits a giant elemental and if it doesn't have a divine shield, it just dies. So venom is always a good pickup. We're getting late in the game and you're looking at your board and you have some utility minions that aren't really doing anything more. And at this point you're at a one-on-one -on -one stage, you don't really need to keep those scaling things as much as you just need to win the fight to end the game. So start cutting those brands, start cutting those Drakaris, and start winning the fight. Otherwise, obvious things like Leroy. Are they leading with a Bramble Witch and your entire board is massive? Well, maybe you should taunt your Leroy. Maybe they have a giant wildfire elemental and you can't find taunt for your Leroy. Well, you can at least put it next to your taunt so when your taunt dies, that wildfire will kick off kill the Leroy and then Leroy kills it. Are they having a massive taunt that it's ridiculous? Lead with the Leroy. There's a lot of scenarios where you can make Leroy deal with a lot of things on their board. Well, you know there's elementals in the lobby because they're playing elementals. That means transmuted Bramble Witch you can use against them. And if they're using it against you, throw out a small taunt. Either taunt minions you don't care about like those brands or Drakaris, or throw out something like a Risen Rider that you really don't care it's gonna be there for at least two hits. And if they have something else they lead with and then the Bramble Witch, it's still gonna be there to take that second swing. The Risen Rider's really effective against it too. Otherwise, you just have to deal with their stats the best you can. One of the fun spells you can get is Upper Hand, where Upper Hand is gonna turn one of their minions at the start of combat to one health. Now, the downside of this is you can't control who it's gonna hit. It might hit their most useless buffing Throw away minion ever. Maybe they're bumper minion. They don't care if you make this of one health. Maybe it also hits something really important that's massive and is now utterly useless or is at least incredibly delicate. So after that one swing, it's dead. Elementals can be dealt with, but if you don't have enough stats, you must switch to various Venoms, Leroy's. Basically, you just have to scam them down if they're too big, because if you already don't have enough stats to deal with them, odds are you're not gonna be able to scale up fast enough to deal with them in a turn or two. All right, it's time that we start talking about the builds we want when we're playing elementals in the battlegrounds. Now, there are a couple different types of builds and one of them right now we're gonna start with is not the most popular nor the most effective, but it can win you some games. So it's worth mentioning it. And I kind of consider it still a core build of elementals because it's not terribly hard to pull off. And that is going to be the spell comp. And that is going to be where we basically get a bunch of elementals that benefit from spells, cast those spells, get big, and hopefully manage to pull off a win. So what are the main pieces of this build? And how do we know we might be playing it? Well, I mean, for me, I'm going to start with Landlubber. If you see a Landlubber at tier three, you're thinking, oh, I might be able to do this as an option. If anything, it's just a nice statted minion that puts an extra spell in the shop. So it's worth it just for that. Next would be Living Azurite. Now, if you have a Landlubber and you see a Living Azurite and it's early, this is a good indication that you might want to do this build because it's relatively easy to pull off since you have basically everything you need to now start. You basically just start casting spells and it will buff the elementals you buy in the shop going forward, giving you that value. It's pretty easy to pull off those initial stages. And now it really just comes to what do you want to put around these? You have the main pieces. We need these other ones. Which ones will fill out the board nicely? And honestly, I'd like to jump to the trinkets next because that decides on which minions we might want to play. 
Now, the lesser trinkets don't really matter. It's whatever you find, because you're not sure you're going to be playing this build until after you've already got your lesser trinket anyways. So we're not going to concern ourselves with that too much. And while some of them could make it easier, none of them really are a requirement. So if we look at the greater trinkets, we already have Landlubber, our Living Azurite, a greater trinket pops up. What could make it better? Well, I mean, Fancy fel Spellbook is pretty easy. I mean, we're going to spend gold. Fancy Spellbook is then going to give us spells randomly. And the more gold you can spend, obviously, the better. So that one's easy. Next, I would say Book of Medivh. You're going to get discovered two spells a turn. Once again, two more buffs to your shop, plus the benefits of those spells. So easy, easy progress there to make. Then finally, I would say the most important one, if you can get it, if you want to do this, is Azerite Portrait. Because it's going to give you a living Azerite, and then your living Azerite is going to buff the elementals on your board, that changes what you kind of want to do going forward. If you find this portrait, you really can now open up a lot of different elementals that you might not normally want on your board to work. What elementals do we want to fill out this build? Well, I mean, that's complicated and not really complicated at the same time, because it depends if you have Azerite Portrait or not. Because let's face it, Carbonic Copy is great if it's on your board and every time you cast a spell, because you have the portrait, it's getting buffed. But at the same time, if you buff the shop enough and you buy a Carbonic Copy, it's still gonna do the job. It's just nice that while you're casting a bunch of those spells, if it's already on your board, it can keep getting buffed. But eventually, if you triple it, you're still gonna gain the benefit either way. Sleeping Sea Glass kind of has that idea too, that yes, if it's on your board every time you're playing him, it's increasing those stats. But the one you're gonna buy from the shop is getting a buff too. It's just not horrible to have these on your board already. Better when you have Azurite. But if you just got the ability to buff it with your Azerite, but you don't have the portrait, and these on your board aren't going to get any bigger, and you're wholly benefiting from when you find them in the shop to buy. Because if you discover one of these elementals with a spell, they're not going to be any bigger. They're just going to be baseline elementals. So you definitely want to be buying them and not discovering them from a spell. But at the same time, you do want to cast those spells as much as possible because they will buff your elementals in the shop. But really, that's the beauty of this. Any elemental works. Obviously, you like things like Bramble Witch, but what if your lobby's got a lot of beasts and undead? Bramble Witch isn't going to be insanely good. Wildfire is amazing. Well, what if they all have Divine Shield? Eh, not great, even if he's massive and he, he bounces off a Divine Shield. It's going to be situational to who you're fighting. Basically, any elemental can fit the bill, depends what task you need them to do. Just buy the right according one for the lobby you're in, make it as big as you can, smash your opponent down, and have fun. The spell build is not super complicated. You just have to kind of decide which ones you need and buff them accordingly. And one final minion that is a good fit on this board is Enscrolled Fungus. You're casting dozens, if not hundreds of spells. If you still need one large body to plop down on the board, Enscrolled Fungus will probably be excessively big. It is essentially immune to the effects of a Bramble Witch, so if you know your opponent's running Bramble Witch, you can taunt it. Yes, any additional buffs, it will turn into a 3-3, but the aura effect of it getting that plus two, plus two for each spell will always stick, so you're at least going to kill the Bramble Witch. That feels pretty good when you kill a Golden Bramble Witch, just because it hit a fungus that is now still relatively massive. And even if you're not going to play them, Anytime you can pick up a Channel of the Devourer spell, that way whenever you see an Enscrolled Fungus in the shop, you can just spit it on your board and gain all those stats. Just make sure you sell your minion that you're cycling, because if you don't, you know those stats will land on it, and then you're going to be sitting there going, crap. Finally, we're going to take a look at APM Elementals. Now, if you've watched any of my guides and videos or watched me play on Twitch, you know that I love APM gameplay. Let me cycle as many cards as I possibly can in a turn, even if they're not super effective and I'm just having fun. That kind of interactive, fast gameplay, I enjoy a lot in Hearthstone and I find it to be very satisfying. Do I like ending my turn with 20 golds left still? No, I want to spend it all. But do I like to try to get the maximum benefit out of it before my time runs out? Yeah, I do. Am I the best? No, not by a long shot, but I still enjoy trying and suffering while chat laughs and has a good time. It is just a satisfying way to play for me, and I feel like Elementals can do a pretty good job of it. So what are the main pieces of this? Well, 
You don't know you're playing this until late, unfortunately, because realistically, you can't kind of do this until you hit at least tier five. What are we looking for? I mean, I would say Recycle Wraith is the, the beginning of this because you really can't dig a lot until you have a Recycling Wraith online. Once you've got Recycling Wraith, next kind of thing you're looking for really is Rock Rock because that ability to play an elemental, buff your board, and also then get a free refresh to go look for more elementals really cannot be overstated. That is huge. You will be able to hunt for all kinds of triples, be you on tier five or tier six, just by utilizing this. Every single elemental that gives you multiple elementals, be it a Celemental, Tavern Tempest, things like that, are gonna give you just massive value because of those free refreshes now attached to them and the buff you're giving to your board from the Rock Rock. It really does add up, and Rock Rock buffs everything, not just Elemental. So anything on your board is benefiting from this cycling. So you can put in basically anything you want to make it work. The next, and I would say the final must-have main piece is going to be Brand. Now, the reason why I say Brand is I know Elementals don't have a ton of battle cries, but the fact that anytime you're cycling something that discovers more things or generates more things means it might give you elementals. And that means you're paying less gold for them because Bran is giving you extra discovers in the case of battle cries and whatnot, or just generations. And then when you take into account the fact that you're getting free rerolls and buffs every time you hit an elemental, that's pretty fantastic. And you really get out of control super fast. The heck with a golden brand. Just a normal brand in a recycling wraith goes completely nuts. Once you start goldening these things, you your turn just cannot be long enough and it is a satisfying, fun way to play the game. The unfortunate part is you really can't kind of commit to it until the later part of the game. You're looking at at least turn eight, typically turn nine, before you've got that recycle wraith rock rock online. Then you find the brand and now you're able to go completely nuts. Now, one of the beauties of this board is because Rock Rock will buff anything, you don't have to buy elementals to flush it out. One of the optional minions I love to use is Fleet Admiral Tethys. The fact that every time you spend nine gold, they're gonna give you a pirate, doesn't mean you're excited to play pirates. You just want the economy that you're gonna get from cycling those pirates, from getting battle cries that will give you extra value, to buffing the Tethys, to just in general gaining more stats to be more effective. Other things that are good are things like a Faux Reaper. There are other cleaves you could use, and I you could say, oh, but I like a blade collector, or I'm weird and I wanna play a wildfire elemental. But Faux Reaper, you can give Divine Shield to relatively easy, so I really would prefer Faux Reaper, but any of those cleave style minions will work to fill that slot. Additionally, I like things like one amalgam tour group, and the reason for that is, well, there's a lot of different minions that get enabled by other things. Battle cries like Primal Fin and whatnot. If you have the Amalgam Tour group on the board, it will trigger all of those because it's an all minion. It's gonna get buffed by the Rock Rock. It's gonna give you all the benefits you want of it being the all all. It's just a good all around minion to have there. Otherwise, then you can kind of fill out the slots with other elementals. But just remember, if you're gonna be cycling a lot of elementals, the kind of thing that's gonna take benefit from that is gonna be something like Flourishing Frostling, which is saying, hey, you've played how many elementals? Well, here I am, I am massive. How you doing? And also while you're cycling all of those elementals and you notice they're getting pretty big, I would pick up any copy of Channel the Devourer you can get because then you can just buy a Frostling or you don't even have to buy it. Just leave it in the shop. If you generate it and it's huge, you can play it, you can spit it, but you could just target it in the shop and Channel the Devourer, it will spit on your board. Just remember to sell whatever cycle minion you are because inevitably, if you don't, the spit will land on the worst minion, which is that, and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you sell the extra minion that you don't care about before you cast it on the minion you want to spit. That way the stats aren't wasted. Otherwise, when it comes to the trinkets you might want to use, basically anything can work, but these are some of the ones that shine the most when I do it. Lava Lamp, obviously you are going to be selling a lot of minions as you're cycling them. Well, Lava Lamp says cycle five, get an elemental, Oh wait, every time you play an elemental, your rock ruck buffs the board. Oh, you are gonna get big. Just keep cycling, go nuts. Also, Nomi sticker. Hey, why not keep buffing the shop? Go completely bonkers, cycle away, have a good time. Jarred Frostling, is there Murlocs in the lobby? All of a sudden you cycled a billion elementals and then two of your elementals randomly has a death rattle that summons a Jarred Frostling. 
can be very, very disruptive to the combat for your opponent. Now, the only problem with this is you don't know which ones are gonna be on, so you cannot position accordingly. Only thing you know for sure is it's gonna be elementals that get these buffs. The prize portrait, I actually find surprisingly to be a lot of fun. While you're doing all that cycling, they're gonna randomly appear a lot though, so be careful. You're gonna have them when you're not expecting them, and if you're hitting refresh too fast, not waiting for those animations to play out, and you're probably not gonna have much time, especially late in the game when you go basically infinite, it's gonna be tough to not occasionally refresh a shop you really wish you had enough refreshed. But otherwise, any of these can work here. Essentially though, that is the build. You're just going to be cycling a whole lot of cards, having a good time. Be careful about your positioning. Be careful about the minions you choose. Be Look at your, what your opponents are doing. If they are going for all token builds, you're not really gonna need a Bramble Witch. But if they're going for giant mech and demon boards, Bramble Witch is good. You have to think about the different minions you can slot into this build because so many things can be put into it. Basically, the limits are what you can find and what you want to do. So try to just keep in, into mind what your opponents are up to and let that influence your, your decisions accordingly because it really could be important and affect the outcome of the game. But that's it. That's how you build, play, work with elementals. They're a lot of fun and I enjoy playing elementals. I think a lot of people don't play them because they don't know how to make them work, but they really can work and they're a lot of fun. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Tell me what you think. I always want to know your thoughts on these because, well, I know how I always play them and I see other people talk about them. You might have questions other people didn't think of. You might not be in my Twitch chat to ask me, so ask me here in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a few things and I hope you had a good time. I hope to see you in the Battlegrounds. Later. Jing up. Jing up. Jing up. Jing up. Slimy flail butt.